Colburn. Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, in the short time I have, I want to focus on a part of this bill that hasn't been discussed throughout the course of this debate yet, which is particularly around the new regulations of district heat networks. Um, I'm very, very grateful that the government has listened to concerns, not just from me, but from colleagues from all sides of the House who have, have, have got district heat networks in their constituencies and just how damaging their unregulated nature can be. This is, happen this is happening at the moment in Carshalton and Wallington on the New Mill Quarter Estate in Hackbridge, something that I've raised a number of times in this place. And I just want to outline very briefly why this new regulation is so needed, uh, why it's welcome, but where I'd also like the government to look into potentially going further. Um, just for a very quick bit of context, the New Mill Quarter Estate in Hackbridge is heated by a series of insulated pipes which stretch from the incinerator in the north of the constituency across redeveloped farmland um, to go and heat these homes. But it has been bedeviled by problems. It's not even online yet. It's being, currently being powered by a backup gas boiler system. Uh, and has had suffered a number of blackouts, two call-outs call from the London Fire Brigade, uh, and seems to have had uh, a practically a huge failure. Um, but I don't have time to go into that now, but I draw the House's attention to some of my other contributions in the House on this. Blackouts is probably the number one reason. Uh, the reliability of district heating networks is a massive problem, and it's not just New Mill Quarter and Hackbridge. It also has happened across other estates in London, such as Oval Quarter in Lambeth, New Festival Quarter in Tower Hamlets, and multiple estates in Southwark, no guessing which party runs those local authorities. But also customer satisfaction is lower for those customers who are on district heating networks rather than gas boilers. A 2017 survey conducted by Bayes found that district heat network customers um, were much less satisfied with their service than other forms of energy. Bills is another big one. Cost of living um, is a massive concern for all of our constituents right now. And the number one concern that comes up time and time again when I talk to Koshal and Wallington residents is about meeting the cost of their energy bills. And that needs to empower Ofgem to force the pricing model of district heat networks to be comparable to the market average is incredibly important. And I'm grateful that the government has looked at this in detail and is taking steps in this direction because the residents living in Numa Quarter are having to face higher than market average energy bills. They are not protected, for example, by the energy price cap because it is an unregulated piece um, of, heat, of heating. So I very, well, very much welcome that, and that will provide a lot of reassurance to people living in Numa Quarter, but also other people who live under a district heat network as well. The final thing that, um, which I welcome the government taking action on. Um, is simply the mon monopolistic nature of heat networks. Customers can't change, they can't go to a new supplier because a district heat network forces those people living within it to use that heat ne network. They can't shop around for a better deal, they can't rely on the market, um, and as a free market conservative, this is very important to me, um, they can't rely on the market to drive down prices whilst driving up reliability. So regulation is so important and I'm very, very grateful that the government is taking steps in this regard. But one area that I would like the government to look at further is about future-proofing district heat networks. Many of them are future-proof by their very nature, but ones like the one in Hackbridge, which are heated by incinerators, I can see a glaring problem coming down the line, which is that the government itself has outlined in its waste minimisation strategy that they want to phase out incineration as a form of dealing with waste. And all of us across the House support the reduction um, and the stopping of incineration as a form of dealing with our waste. Incineration is only slightly better than landfill, only very, very slightly. It is, it is not a net zero conducive form of waste management, in my opinion. You are relying on creating waste to feed it. And the problem that we can see in estates like Hackbridge is that you are going to have an incinerator which becomes less and less needed as years, as years go on. You either then have one of two options. Either you have to import waste to feed the thing, to keep the um, heating going. That obviously isn't conducive with any net zero ambitions. Or the thing has to be turned off. And that means, well, what happens then? All of that entire estate was a new build built specifically with the infrastructure to deal with this. What is going to happen 
it, no matter how, I might, I might be long dead by the time it happens, but the problem is coming and I don't think we should leave that to a future generation to solve. I do think this is something that we need to look at in terms of future proofing that now. But overall, I do really welcome the measures taken in this bill. I would urge colleagues to support it. Um, but can I just ask them? I'll gladly give way. Absolutely. Very quickly. I'm very interested in what you're saying about uh, heat net networks. Um, but I, I was wondering if you might think or you might agree with something I've learned just very recently mm. as a proposal from uh, a stakeholder that deals in renewable energy, mm. including electrolysis, uh, mm. to create hydrogen, actually mm. generates a lot of heat. Mm. And, and their suggestion is that we actually uh, declare heat as a, as a utility in a more wider form. Would that help his purposes? I'm very grateful to my honourable friend for that intervention because he's absolutely right. And it comes back to a point that a number of colleagues have made today, which is that we can't mandate the use of one or a very small number of technologies here. We do need to have that collective option. But I would just urge the government to err on the side of caution because under its... Um, uh, under its own ambitions, district heat networks could account for anything like two-fifths of the UK's heat um, provision. Given the problems that have existed, not just in Hackbridge, but across multiple estates, as I mentioned, and not, indeed not just in London, I would urge the government not to put all of its eggs in one basket and rely on district heat networks as a singular answer. And I agree with my honourable friend from Banff and Buchan. Um, there are plentiful supplies of renewable energy out there. We need to make sure that we are not mandating nor preventing the use of any one. And we are using all of those potentials to reach our net zero ambitions and provide more domestic energy security. But I do very much welcome the measures taken within this bill. I urge colleagues to support it, and it will certainly have my support tonight.